how do you, how do you actually create a powerful morning routine? And I'll make a distinction why why I love this because of the way that the question is framed uh, versus what is a powerful morning routine, right? Um, I think it's essential that when we create these powerful morning routines, first of all, let's look at the morning routine, right? Uh, it's so important because we want to start the day the way that we mean to carry on, right? If if you get yourself off to a good start uh, in the morning, the rest of the day comes with greater ease and flow than if you got off the wrong side of bed, so to speak, in the morning. I think we've all kind of been there, right? Uh, we've all experienced what it's like. You have a lousy start of the day and it seems like it ruins uh, the rest of the day. So that's the importance of a, a powerful morning routine. And the difference between creating a powerful morning routine for yourself that works for you, that fits you, that suits you, uh, versus simply what is a powerful morning routine, right? Um, because it's a little bit like this. I'm going to use the example of uh, cars here, right? Like uh, the, the, the servicing, right, of a, or the maintenance and the servicing of a top of the range, you know, elite motor racing Formula One car is going to look different for the servicing and maintenance of a normal road sports car, say like a like a Porsche or, or, or Ferrari, uh, which is also going to be different for the servicing and maintenance of a normal road car, right? They're, they're all different. And even if it was the same brand or the same model of car, it also depends on a variety of factors, right? Uh, the, the, the car that needs to be serviced, you know, what's, what's been the mileage of this car, right? And uh, what kind of conditions has it been uh, driven under? Right? Uh, what kind of seasons right, does it have had to better? Now, I'm using this car as a, as a metaphor uh, that kind of really represents each of us as individuals. Right? We've all got you know, this life, uh, but the way where you're coming from, what's going on in your life right now is different from everyone else's life. So that's, it's more than simply our fingerprints uh, that are unique and different. Our experiences, daily experiences, are unique and different. Yours is different from your classmates if you're in, 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 you know, in some institute of learning. Uh, definitely different from your colleagues if, if you're working. Different from you know, other entrepreneurs and so on and so forth. So it's important that we help you create a morning routine uh, that works for you rather than simply, oh, tell me, you know, what, what should I do? What should I do? Well, I can't tell you what you should do. In fact, I, shouldn't, I would recommend that you shouldn't be listening to people who tell you what uh, you should do based on what they do, right? Uh, we get people, I mean, come on, you know, if you're listening to this, to this uh, uh, podcast right now, if you're watching this video right now, it's only because you have a desire, hunger, a thirst for learning, right? You're a lifelong learner. Uh, and the same way you want to beware uh, how you're learning or what you're learning. Because, see, if we look at something like a morning routine, it, you know, I hear people go like, oh, you know, I've, I've learned from this particular teacher or this, the, the, this master. Um, and um, this teacher taught me that, you know, I should get eight hours of sleep uh, a night. And then someone will, then you go to another teacher, another, uh, you know, guru, and then they say, no, you know, you don't need eight hours of sleep a night. You just need six hours of sleep a night. That's fine. And then you go learn from somebody else. And then this person says, oh, you know, you've... 5 a.m. in the morning, that's the best hour uh, for you to wake up. And then you go listen to somebody else and that person says, no, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. is the magic hour. 4 a.m. is the magic hour for you to wake up. And then you go listen to another guru and another master and they say 3 a.m., 3 a.m. and it will change your life. I tell you what, if you listen to all these people, you'll never go to sleep. <laughs> right? And, and you, you know why? Because it's so much information and it's so much conflicting, kind of contrasting information because all these people are working based on what works for them. And you want to create a routine that works for you, that works for you. So now we come back then, therefore, into, okay, great. If the whole point of a, of a morning routine is to set me up to win in the day, to set me up uh, for, for, for what's to come during the day, then well, what's going to set you up, right? If, if we were to ignite the engine uh, of your car, you know, what needs to happen in that initial ignition that will set the car up for the drive uh, that lies ahead? In other words, you know, when we warm a car up, we're basically bringing the car to life, right? In other words, uh, we are filling uh, this car with energy. So in the same way for you in the morning, what we want to be looking at here is your energy, your energy. Now, when I say your energy, I don't mean, oh, you got to be jumping out of bed and go, woohoo, 
Ooh, you know, uh, life is great today. No, I'm not talk talking about this kind of energy. I'm talking about your, your sources of your energy, your sources of energy. See, why the way you're working isn't working anymore is because you have focused on simply tasks and activities and goals rather than on yourself. Right, this car that is you needs to get somewhere. We need to focus on the on on this car, which is you. And so that means we need to focus on your energies. And when it comes to your energies, there are four different sources of energies that you want to pay attention to. Right, four different sources of energy. Now, when you create your morning routine, you could use these four different sources of energy as a little bit like a checkbox, like a bit of a checklist. Okay, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever practices. Uh, that you're doing, does it take these four sources of energy? The first source of energy we're looking at here is your physical energy, right? What is your physical energy? Your physical energy is your physical capacity, uh, which is really the foundation on which everything else rests. If you don't have the physical energy to get out of bed, forget about everything else, right? If you don't have the body, uh, forget about having mental focus, right? So the physical energy is the physical capacity on which everything else rests. And so the thing you want to check in with yourself here is, are you doing the things that are getting you into the best possible physical shape, right? Whether it's about nutrition or it's about movement or it's about exercise or it's about whatever that might be, right? Uh, cutting out certain things from your diet or putting more or some good stuff. Your physical energy is something you want to pay attention to here, right? Are you renewing and rejuvenating yourself in a way that has you be physically capable to meet the day. That's number one. Number two here, your second source of energy here is your emotional energy. See, if, if physical energy is the quantity of energy, then you might see emotional energy as the quality of the energy. Your emotional energy is about how you feel and how you feel will drastically impact how you perform, how well you lead, how well you interact with other people. So what are the kind of uh, practices do you engage in uh, to help you work on your emotional energy. This is something that we do a great deal of. You know, we've got this multi-day uh, program, 100-day uh, journey called We Are The Champion. And in my experience, a lot of people, they come into this space here, the emotional energy uh, that makes a difference between, oh, I'm feeling lost, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling kind of demotivated to what? Being on task, being on track, being on purpose, right? Uh, Emotional energy also has to do with the quality of your relationships, right? The people that you're with. Uh, what are some of the relationships that are mutually satisfying for you uh, versus the ones that are toxic and really suck the life out of you? Okay, so that's the second source of energy you want to pay attention to. And then the third source of energy, which is our mental energy, right? Uh, our mental energy, you know, to what degree are you able to focus on what needs doing versus being distracted, being overwhelmed, by a whole bunch of multitude of other things that are screaming for your attention, right? Or even those little things that can suck your mental energy. If I'm talking to you right now and my phone is just pinging next to me, there's a part of me that's mentally that has left you that has gone towards the phone because there's a notification that just came in. There's an email, there's a WhatsApp message, there's a Facebook message, whatever that's going on. And now that's sucked my mental energy from being present with you or the task that I have on hand towards something else. So what are the practices, exercises that you'll be performing in the morning that has you uh, set you up right, in the best possible shape for your mental energy? And then the fourth source of energy that you have here is your spiritual energy. Your spiritual energy, for some people, the spiritual energy um, is informed or based on uh, perhaps some kind of a spiritual tradition or some kind of religion, and that's great. Uh, and if it isn't, uh, you could also see your spiritual energy as the why energy, the why, W-H-Y. Why do you do what you do? It's a sense of being on purpose, right? It's having an, an awe and a reverence for something that's way bigger than you, that you are at the same time insignificant in this entire eternity of life and time. And at the same time, this insignificant small you has got a big purpose, a big function to fulfill. So that's what we mean by your spiritual energies. So as you're designing your morning routines, you really want to be attending to all four of these energies. They are not compartmentalized. And what I mean by that is it's not, oh, 
this physical and physical, physical has got nothing to do with spiritual, spiritual has got nothing to do with it. No, they are all related, right? There's an overlap, there's an interplay between all of these four. For example, if if I'm physically fatigued and I'm exhausted right now, clearly it will impact my mental capacity, it will impact my mental capability. So all four of these here are interrelated. That's why you won't be paying attention to all four of them in your morning routines. Now, if you're starting morning routines for the first time, we don't need a multitude of exercises, a multitude of practices or things you need to do. No, it's not about, about that. You just want to attend to each of these four. Your morning routine could take an hour. Your morning routine could take 20 minutes. Your morning routine could take five minutes. What is the one that's going to work for you? And then you determine each of those exercises or the practices that will have you renew and rejuvenate yourself in each of all those four sources of your energy. I hope this has been useful for you and um, you know, have fun with this. Have fun creating, designing, and then following through on your morning routine. Trust me, once you've got this, once you've maintained a consistency around your morning routine, you're going to look forward to waking up in the mornings. Uh, and as a result of that, you're going to be looking forward to what the day brings forth and presents for you. All right, my name is Thaddeus Lawrence. May your energy sustain and take you forward towards the success, towards the fulfillment that you seek in your life. Take care and let me know how you're doing.